If a country wants to get into the highly competitive drug trafficking arena, what should it do? That's the question a poverty-stricken Russia faced in the 90s, right after the fall of the Soviet Union. When the economy crashes, crime rises. So aspiring gangs set out to discover how to get into the cocaine business. Soon they realized they had to go straight to the source, the Colombian drug makers. But how did Russian gangs convince Colombian criminals to provide them with tons of cocaine? And how did they transport a whopping 42 million kilos of drugs to Europe? Russia was broke. There wasn't a secret stash of money just lying around waiting to be used to buy drugs, but there was a little thing called hope. The country had an abundance of one thing that narco-traffickers enjoyed immensely, arms. The former Soviet Union had fought tightly against the United States for technological command. Though the European country had lost the war, it produced some of the most destructive weapons on the planet. So, Russian crime syndicates and military officers started supplying powerful weapons to Colombian rebels in exchange for massive shipments of cocaine. This primitive operation soon became a literal industry, with intelligence officials terrified by its power. An unlikely union of groups banded together and formed a looming threat. In a nutshell, this group is formed by corrupt Russian military officials, oligarchs, diplomats, and revolutionaries, who send up to 40,000 kilograms of cocaine to Russia per trip. In exchange, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, or FARC for short, receive large quantities of lethal weaponry. Among the traded weapons are RPGs and Russian SA model shoulder-mounted anti-aircraft weapons, similar to U.S. Stinger missiles. Even in the hands of untrained rebel armies, RPGs and missile launchers are capable of downing a Black Hawk helicopter. So, who knows what a guerrilla group could do with them? While we don't know the extent of the damage that FARC might still do with these weapons, we still have a good handle on the whole smuggling operation and how it works. Goes a little something like this. IL-76 cargo plane takes off from various airstrips in Russia and Ukraine, carrying anti-aircraft missiles, as well as small arms and ammunition. Then the planes, roughly the size of Boeing 707s, refuel in Amman, Jordan. After crossing the Atlantic, the cargo planes drop off their supplies to the FARC via parachute. However, there's a catch to this method. Even though the IL-76 can drop huge loads via parachute, doing so needs good weather and skilled pilots. Both things aren't always available, especially in the frequency needed to provide large quantities of cocaine to one of the biggest mafias in Europe. After repeated problems with airdrops, traffickers began testing new methods. To avoid detection, they now utilize a variety of existing runways where they can bribe officials to allow the cargo in. So, it's a good thing that IL-77 can also land on rough remote landing strips. Some planes seem like they were built specifically for crime. The plane's capacity is also pretty impressive as the IL-76 transports troops, arms, and tanks for the Russian military. A trained ground crew can unload, refuel, and reload a plane carrying 90,000 pounds of cargo in just one hour. That's the equivalent of 5,400 rifles and 360,000 rounds of ammunition as well as a bunch of shoulder-held missiles and RPGs. Although the FARC unloads the arms, they reload the planes with 40,000 kilograms of cocaine. A part of the 40,000 kilograms of cocaine is distributed to diplomatic middlemen in Amman as payment for the arms, while the remainder is flown back to Persia to be sold there, in Europe and the Persian Gulf. Though this operation looks clever enough, you think that a piece might be missing the more you look at it. How do they smuggle tons of drugs without authorities noticing? Turns out smugglers tend to have a little help. It might come as a shock to you, but even Democrats can be corrupted. Politicians, even, even important people, especially important people, can be corrupted. No drug smuggling operation would work without the help of people high up in the command chain. And the Russian-Colombian operation, that ain't no exception. The IL-76 has used Royal Jordanian's Amman cargo facilities, where corrupt employees are paid off to overlook fraudulent paperwork. The jets are given permission to pass Amman under diplomatic cover from a Spanish-speaking embassy there. It's unclear which embassy is involved in the operation, as official sources of the investigation didn't give many details. But we can take a good guess. There are two Spanish-speaking embassies in Amman, Spain and Chile. But the third player is possible. The Portuguese-speaking Brazilian embassy often conducts business in Spanish. The Spanish-speaking embassy official in Jordan can clear diplomatic shipments and authorize embassy funds when more money is needed to move the shipments through Amman. The embassy contact might have a high position. Still, intelligence sources say that they don't think the country involved or Jordan's government knows about the scheme. 
That makes the whole operation even more impressive. These diplomats are so sneaky that they can clear the path for drugs without their country even knowing. And the next step of the operation is nothing short of impressive and lucrative. In Europe, a kilogram of cocaine can sell for more than $50,000. Russian organized crime is known to be involved in its smuggling, and Spain is the most common entry point. Drug enforcement officials in Europe say that the most cocaine and heroin when from Colombia enter the continent through Spain. Thus, most suspicions fall on Spain's embassy because Spain is a critical player in the drug trade in Europe. Under diplomatic cover, some of the cocaine is sent to middlemen in Jordan, who then sell it on the streets. Most of the cocaine shipments go to Russia and Ukraine, where the demand for the drug is growing, or to other lucrative markets in Europe and the Persian Gulf, where it's sold for a profit. No one could stop the Russian mafia. Well, uh, unless until this happened. Nobody's perfect. People make mistakes and smuggling operations are destroyed because of it. A drug shipment worth millions of dollars was found in suitcases at the Russian embassy in Argentina, resulting in the dismantling of a very complex operation. So, after a plan to move 400 kilograms of cocaine out of the Russian embassy school in Buenos Aires was destroyed, a district court in Russia sentenced Andrei Kovalchuk, known as Mr. K, to 18 years in prison. Kovalchuk was the mastermind of the operation, but it seems his plans weren't that good. Someone noticed what was going on. In 2016, Russia's then ambassador to Argentina, Victor Coronelli, took Argentina's former security minister, Patricia Bullrich, and that there were 12 suspicious suitcases at the diplomatic headquarters. This information initiated a relentless investigation. Soon authorities from Argentina arrived at the scene and discovered there were drugs in the suitcases. But instead of acting hastily, they executed a brilliant plan to catch the criminals. The police exchanged 400 kilograms of cocaine in the suitcases, worth approximately $62 million, for the same weight in white flour. The authorities then installed wiretaps and satellite trackers in the suitcases. After several failed attempts, the traffickers finally loaded the suitcases onto a Russian Federal Security Service diplomatic courier in 2018. And thus came their demise. Five men were arrested and the operation was over. Still, Russia's criminal activities are far from over. One victory for the police is nothing against the gigantic business operation running to this day. But even though Russia's methods for smuggling drugs have been a mostly successful uh, success, there's someone who did it even better. Someone who used the skies and the sea to their advantage. Click here to find out how Pablo Escobar moved 1 billion kilos of cocaine into the US.